to be the queen and the two Rogers, and then our stranger, you know, Cosmo. And I just wanted to honor the correspondence that was starting to happen between us when we were in our poetics semester with the email chains with our essays when we were in deep conversation with each other. So on October 4th, 2023, I wrote an email, dearest Roz and Waz, I'm writing to you both because we're all tied together. It feels wrong to cut out and portion my experiences of reading your essay and apply them to the correct thoughts. I recognize that this will be long, so please feel free to come and go as you please in the letter attached. I'm so honored to witness your exchange with each other on the last page. Roz to Roz, Roz to Roz, and Roz to Roz. Hi, Roz, I'm so happy to be in a thread with you both. In conversation and are created by respective poetic essays. Thank you, Mika, for such clear reflections and reading our work. Thank you, Rob, for talking about the expansive nature of your work. I admire you for being steadfast in your essay, being a single entity with various parts or portals. I too have an essay with multiple threads. My conceptions, yet they are together in each other. That is the beauty of all our work. We are on the river, and between the very land of the sea. Forging and floating, bending our way around all the currents and currents. We may travel far, but still we live in the swim body. Dear Mika and Roz, these will be my notes. They operate on multiple frequencies. One is the response channel, which for me is oftentimes an imitation and an elaboration. I was inspired when I saw the style in which Mika wrote the most recent letter to us, the way that Mika was writing about the things happening in life, as much as the things happening in the essays. I can see how it is all clutched at once in a depth, motion, and slow motion. So arising from that, I was thinking of like, the what a GMS could be. I was really interested in it. The class, I'm really interested in the presentation, so I opted for a panel. So, our, our main question that we're going like, to discuss is this concept is writing the studio art. So, if you ever look in depth at the PNCA World Residency creative writing page, there's like this word, and I'll, I'll read it. The low residency MFA and creative writing program is unique in that it considers language as one among many available, available materials. Situated in a school of art and design that employs strong support of interdisciplinary practices, our program encourages experimentation within and across written forms, genres, and mediums, along with a variety of publishing formats to include print, digital, sound, performance, and text image. This is writing as studio art. So I pose to both the Rosins, what is this concept as writing as studio art mean to you? We spent some time with this phrase over the past two years. Whichever one of you wants to start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> yeah, for me, writing as studio art, I would have had no idea what that meant, really. But now, I feel like it means, tr for me, treating language as a material like paint or something like that. Um, like how you saw with the with my GMS, with the collage and together at the end, it's like, I'm just realizing that as artists, we're, we're archivists and um, we have access to all this stuff. And then, you know, I wanna write, I wanna figure out my life and writing helps me do that. But I also want to um, arrange things you know, playfully. So that's that's kind of what, what I've come to with the writing of studio art, especially in this conversation that we, um, Mika and Roz both are super, you know, beyond language when it comes to their making. Whereas I, I mean, I love sound and stuff, but I've oftentimes felt more stuck in language. So being a community, um, I've never had a studio, but I really see being in, in community as studio art as well. I, I have a fantasy of like, you know, having a space where you can come and chat and all that stuff. So I feel like our thread was kind of like 
just like in our conversations, we each have like individual correspondences and then we have this couple of right away. And I can see that being really good. Yeah, this phrase on the website is actually why I applied. Um, same. Because <laughs> I was like, yes, I can combine all the things that I do, which for me, like, it is not. That is the only way that I want to do it. Um, so this is really attractive to me. And uh, I ended up getting a studio this year, which is not part of this program, but like through my connections with different departments and faculty advocating for it and paying for it. Um, I need to get a studio space in the MFA studio, which is just really beautiful because that was I've never had like a physical art studio like that before. And it really helped me to have that dedicated space to like just move things around, just play with things. It really helped as I was getting ready for the installation. But yeah, I also think of creating a studio art as just like an emotional space too, where you're letting things take up the emotional, physical, mental space of the too without trying to make them smaller. Something that goes through all of us is writing is as and this was also brought up in, in Jess's GMS, like what else is or can be writing? So like for me, writing is as art, like my art classes and my practice are like very intertwined. Like I don't see a an end or beginning to either of them. It really flaws or our studio you have very similar feelings. So for all of you, writing is as art, is as music, installation, recording, release. Um, do you both want to talk about a little bit about your recording performance? Part of your faculty and how that reflects not into your writing or like how you sequence or how you curate your pieces. You shared those back and forth, I feel like at the very beginning of like coding together because you were very much like you said writing rounds and then I was like recording stuff as spoken word. So I feel like we had a lot of like fun with that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, recording is like so broad. Like in your um in your talk you took you brought up the the quote from is it Nietzsche? Or yeah. yeah, about like everything can be art to the extent of like not necessarily don't want to say everything, but like each part of the pro process, the text message, um, or the going to the diner, it, it's all a recording process in my mind. I mean, I've had a little bit of conversation with Gina about memory. And I mean, I think we talk about memory a lot in this program. I'm the kind of person who likes to talk about forgiveness. I feel like that's like a little bit like bad. I'm not supposed to do that, but forgetfulness is um, a part of memory too. And I mean, um, to, to my mind, everything is recorded, whether or not I remember it. Like that's just something that my dad said to me. He doesn't remember anything. He's <laughs> <laughs> like. You know, everything is recorded, so, uh, but, but um, I, I like to record audio. Like what I was saying. Like photography. Are you saying everything is recorded, right? Because I'm not Or what does that mean? Um, to me, it means that there's an impression that's made on the body. <laughs> I've heard you are the response channel. It's really important. You can you touch like a little bit upon that, like in the GMS, but is there anything else you want to say about it in terms of the Anthony Bosses work? Yeah, for the like response channel and recording overlaps, but like you did it with the same. I feel like I, I always like to read out loud anything I write, and that helps me like edit. Um, and then like thinking about bringing writing into a physical space, uh, lends me to 
situation where the patient is sound asleep. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just thinking about what are the things that I want to hear outside myself is the thing that all the time. I feel like we need to share reporting to the broad like externalized things that are very helpful way for me. I think it's hard to like share writing like both it's hard to like the large reporting thing and then bringing out to respond and report as well. Um are you describing it as like what Gabbard as a little says about being in the world a certain way, like something that's come up between all of our correspondences is like living as we were kind of being like some sort of like more assimilated in this program in the world in general. Um, can you speak about your experiences with that? What I love that it says in that first uh, workshop we all did, like even the way I set my screen to be the art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I came into this program, it was like, because I was used to my grandpa. My grandpa's name is Arthur. And people call him Art. And what he does is he like takes like stones and puts them in the ground to make stepping stones. And to me, that was like art. So it just always seemed to be art is just everything. But I think that, I mean, related to the Gabrielle Seville quote, what she quoted in your TMS, like, and which I quoted back to you, the giving of the make, it's only in the giving of the making is evidence of being alive. Like when I say everything's reported, that's kind of hyperbole. But I mean once once it's given to somebody else and then there's a then and then there's a reverberation, then that's like um that's how I see the response chain and everything. The reporting being related and uh, living living on it for sure. I mean what, how can you have a how can you have an attitude where everything's art? I'm not really sure. I think we're here to figure out what art is, and I'm still like confused about art and the difference between high and low in particular. But it seems that it has something to do with the frame. So like the framing that we have when we're in relationship with each other is like so important. Yeah, I like the response being like the generation of the Back to each other with a lot of that, like a lot of mirroring and reflecting and reflecting in the response as well, but reflecting the reverberation. And just like that intimacy between us. Yeah, and then you can see each other. Like, I feel like I have a hard time connecting with people to where, like, I I feel like I see them or I know that they, that they know I see them. You know, so like, if making something where there's a reflection. And then, like, I remember when my mom would talk to me, I would try to repeat what she said to me in a different words and see if it still made sense to her. Like, I feel like I'm still almost just like doing that, but like, in space. How do you make differentiate between like that kind of like reflection and variation that you started to create? How would I differentiate between reflection and variation? Um, well, I think translation is a way to get at that. You know, we talk about translation a lot, and it's like when somebody else says something, it's, it's somehow different, right? Like, even if we read the same strand of text, it's still variation if, it, if I give it a different intonation. Or they're trying to teach us how to scan poems in high school, and I'm like, what? Because like I'm listening to rap because everyone says something differently. And I'm like, that's not how that would be pronounced. But language <laughs> 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 Even though their views from this aren't like speaking a part of our language with each other and to each other, and that is all overcreating and reflecting. And I think when we're like, we're all on the river, like we're 
in making those comments that the language through through reason through reflection. Continuing with the wonderful design. Um, they commented that like my poetics essay isn't just writing about writing, but making about making. And I also made a lot of those critiques and also with everybody else in my cohort. Um, what is your relationship with making about making? Or like what made you feel about phrase making about making? Does that like make more encompass your caucus? Because for me, like it was hard for me to approach the poetics essay from like I'm going to write about writing. Like, I didn't feel qualified at most. So applying the frame, oh, I'm just going to talk about how I'm making like the whole creative process is easier for me. Yeah, I've heard a lot more about people writing about making about physical, physical action. And I think writing about writing is really the same feel like making about making is for me encompasses more of like the work that is going off of the making as well. So like not just in terms of the, these are the different writing dramas that I'm straddling, but also like the bring to my thread on the my installation bringing this and that. Um, how has like working off the page with the fresh like your experience here and just like your artistic um process in general? I just think it's so important. I mean you, the page is just like I wrote so much before I started this program, and it was just for myself, right? Like I could have written forever for myself, but like coming here to write for other people is really what I wanted to do. And like figuring out how to be in relationships is always off the page. Like we are, we're in relationships together and on the page as well, but like it only actually requires meaning in the context that it's in, which is like Roz was saying about having language. Like if you have a relationship with someone. Like to me, the more I'm in this program, the more I just feel like, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but like what I make just isn't even that important. Like having friends. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, really. yeah, like like what I mean. that's all off the page to me. Being in community, being in community offices versus like physical action, like real, real steps to me off the page. That makes the on the page collaboration possible. Where it's like, yeah, I think too, that's, that's like what I mean, like things taking up space, like less of friendship having up space, less of connection and necessary care take up space. That was a lot of way I experienced this. I think you experienced this all over our whole first uh, residency and first semester with Allison, where like you getting up and it's the work, like you being in the world, it is the work, and you don't need to go through this mindset about like, okay, I need to be productive, I need to be always on, like all these things flow back into your creative process. Yeah, for sure. Something that was sort of like a, a thread throughout a lot of the poetics essays was like this tension of being sort of like an outsider. Um, in, in Laws' essay, um, Zeta describes, this essay is born again and again out of my tandem failures to perceive myself accurately and communicate myself to others. And then ours was, I have always felt apart, excluded, and for others who have been excluded too. Where beyond this realm can we take ourselves? And then in my essay, I'm forever an outsider who doesn't belong anywhere. Right. <laughs> 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 
that's part of being a writer. I feel like writing is such a like way to turn tide to like figure out how you're in the world and the places you go that harder to think you're going to understand. So I don't know. I feel like being an outsider and being a writer is both pretty important. Or can being an outsider is super important because like. Yeah, that's why it's so hard to connect to like girls outside. But, um, yeah, in terms of failing to perceive myself accurately and failing to communicate that to others, yeah, that's constant. And that's what made me more poetic that they happen this way anyway. But yeah, somehow it's like just figuring out being being in this triple thread and and beyond the triple thread with the rest of the program, like, um, figuring out how to connect through the outsiderness is pretty important. Um, so I think that's what I was trying to do. Yeah. So how did, how did you feel about that, Mika? At least for me, the way that I was perceiving outside and outside of it's to what it's like I always feel like kind of this limbo in between space between set genres or set mediums. Um, so and for me my poetics essay I pretty much describe like I don't feel like I'm qualified to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. Um just aren't again being the, the question do you blur genre or does it blur you? And I felt like very strongly both ways. <laughs> they both arise from each other. Um, for either of you, do you for genre or does it work? You really quickly started out. Um, I'm getting some notes that they're having trouble hearing you, and I think it's just picking up okay. your voices a little. For sure. For sure. Thanks. Okay. Reposing it. Do you for genre or does it work? To both of you. I mean, I feel like genre blurs me like the more embodied sense of like the somatic response of like, paying attention to what is happening in my body and what I, what feelings are arising. I feel like the blur of genre also works through that sense, like outside in, external to internal, and I feel like who I blur genre is more like internal to external, like how do I take what's in me and shift that certain things that are already said around me. I guess we can be like this if we don't like that. <laughs> right. I still don't even know what genre is. Like genre to me feels like generations. Like it's mostly for like marketing or something. Yeah. Like I don't even know why I'm like in terms of being an outsider, I sometimes wonder why I'm not an outsider. Like legitimately, how do I, how am I even a person in the world at all, let alone like fitting into a genre? I think genre is art. I don't know. <laughs> Me and I was talking about that with Jennifer because I always have just labeled everything a posh genre that I've turned in. And then this semester or this workshop, I took that off even. Because at first I was like, oh, maybe this one's poetry. And then I was like, no, and then I was like, cross on her, and then I was like, no, and then I just left it. Um, but like, I don't know, Jennifer said something really helpful about like, I don't remember the exact words, but it was basically like, genre is only so useful as in like, how it helps you, like, either market your work or understand your work, but like, you don't really need it to appreciate it for a specific thing, basically. Yeah. And I just feel like there's no like, I don't really, I don't really care if I care. Right. Like, until I need to have that for the purpose of, like, making money or marketing, then, like, why does it matter? I don't know. Right. Like, unless you're trying to build a container or something, like, you see something with someone and you say, I want to write a novel because I love to be a man. So, like, maybe that's how you can make work. Like, you have different I mean, yeah, and I feel 
like the examples of con genres in general is like yes that and like I don't really know how to I don't really know how to label it. Like I think that it can be labeled in so many different ways and it's kind of hard. I remember when I went to a library in Denver and I figured out poetry was in the non fiction section. And I was just like, what? <laughs> like that made no sense to me. And or people would think I would say I was a poet just because I didn't know what I was. It's like, what? Whatever. <laughs> 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 I feel like I came into this very like, oh yeah, I only get fiction. You know, I'm even like, I guess I only write fiction. Like actually, I don't know. It was interesting for me coming from like not as writerly of a background and then seeing there be like so many divisions like writers and poets and then for me i'm like but the poets are writers why, why is there like this weird like um schism and then like both me and boss were both, like presented as poets thousand and i was like well i i do poetry but i'm not sure if i would necessarily rank myself the most as like a poet so it's, it's really interesting like how Things are sometimes like or poison upon you, depending on like where you are, um, what you're doing. It's like a bunch of things from like Jenny Bully, a bunch of things from Allison and Jess are like saying about this. And luckily, the program's kind of moving towards like a less genre defining thing and more into like people being in community with each other. You're able to like be exposed to like different people's work as opposed to like. This is the poetry workshop, and we're all going to do poetry. And this is the fiction workshop, and we're all going to do fiction. Um, so I, I think that's really cool that we're able to foster each other. Yeah, that was definitely a requirement of programs. Like, because so many are traditional, like poetry track, fiction track, like they're all very separated and distinct. And so I was specifically just looking at cross genre because I did not want to do that. And this program has really like let us all be so not only cross genre but also interdisciplinary right uh, which I really appreciate. I was wondering if you wanted to talk Nika about how like you came in with the artist label being like a writer artist or like did you change that when you wrote she wrote the first time? Yeah so me when I was starting to like look into places to um apply to it was either I want to be like be in an environment where I can be like both player both but a lot of programs are like, you're in the studio track, you're in your studio, that's what you're doing, or like, you're writing your manuscript, that's what you're doing, you're not going to have anything to do with like the art world. So I'm like, crap, why do I have to choose? Again, um, these are both very like, important to me in my practice. Um, so I was interested in this program because of, again, like the writing studio art a little, a little longer. And for me, um, the way that I framed what I was doing in the moment when I'm like, I used to like mainly do photography and I identified as a photographer and that practice has kind of like fallen away a little bit. So I kind of rebranded that as like artist, writer, writer, artist, even now that's so like, I'm not sure if that's like the correct frame for myself, but it's there. Yeah, I feel like I applied to the program not so much because of the studio art part, but because of the interdisciplinary part they didn't like labels and because I didn't want to go to a program where I couldn't think about sound basically. Um, but in my conversation with Roz, um, I thought a lot about like how different people are different around different people. Like I have an experience where like if I'll go and like talk to like when I was a kid, you know, I grew up around all white people and it was like I was a white person. And then like so if I go and like hang out with black people, it's like I'm now I'm a black person. It's like if I go hang around all men, it's like, oh, now you're a man. And now if you go hang around like all women, it's like, now maybe you're not a man. And I'm just like, so I guess what I am just depends where I am. But having that, we can be like different people in relationship with each other beyond genres. Of course, if we're all fiction writers, then we're all going to be fiction writers. But if the fiction writers hang out with poets, hanging out with photographers, hanging out with painters, then like there's gonna be so much more possibility how people see us. I think it's just about like changing the mm -hmm. and like refusing and resisting the box to like what it looks like. Yeah. 
events are open and up to both the Zoom and in the room if people have other questions, either for the three of us or for one of us. about anything, it could be about off the page, it could be about like working in relation and residency with each other. Actually, you know what, I can, I'll just speak about that. Um, <laughs> I, I'm in a different state than the two of them, and then Waz moved away as well, so we found it was like really important to keep being in relation with each other through letters, since we all weren't physically in the same space. And once you go, with your respective mentor, it can kind of like feel like you're on an island. If you don't make the effort to like keep being connected to people. So like keeping connection to like your immediate cohort and also the people like above you and below you so that it doesn't feel as like you're in isolation and you're just creating your own little bubble. Just like take advantage of like everybody in the room and then everybody can see. Yeah, I can imagine the room that would have any correspondences and exchanges because, yeah, like I pointed out in the previous slides, but like I've incorporated poetical knowledge into my poetic essay, like I've incorporated exchanges with me and like other pieces. Like, I feel like the work we do in correspondence ends up in our work, like, it's all tied together. And I just, yeah, I can't quite imagine experience would be without having those exchanges because they have been so enriching and it helped me learn so much more than I would have without the whole like state of that education. If you want we can talk a little bit about like one of those collaborative pieces. <clears throat> and uh Allison and me and everyone all the mentors really encourage collaboration too and it would like we in particular members collaboration, but Allison would tell me like um, you know to do my peers as my mentors as well. Like we're all mentors to each other, so we could all reach out to each other and learn so much beyond what and your friends will help you even if they're not paying you. So, <laughs> <laughs> but also if you could your friends too. None of them. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, at some point when I was doing the collage and stuff, I put together, um, I read through all the letters that Mika and Ross sent me and then made collages out of those for them. Um, and emailed to them. And then um, I think Ross went and emailed to me even more out of that. So, being, being in collaboration can, can be a whole. Questions in the room. We can transition out of it. Um, yes. Um, so I know that you talked about like a, a shared language of grief and some of your work, which is something that I'm working with as well. And but also the um, language of material and arranging things playfully. So I'm just curious. Or any of you could want to speak to how you balance grief and playfulness in your work. I'm not sure how I do. The thing that comes to mind is a quote from Ocean Vuong about um, that quote. No. Yeah, uh, that grief is the last and final decision. Set back. Important to each other a lot of times, like so many different translations of that. But 
I feel like that's our response to like someone else's complaint or that resonated with our reading language. And then, yeah, and then it goes on to talk about writing a film. <laughs> but then, like, when it's over, it's like, oh, my life is over. <laughs> but, it's hard for me to like, approach playfulness in my own work by like, responding to like music. I was able to be more playful in like the correspondence and in the collaborations. And I think that that's like a way of looking at possibility. Mm -hmm. Or even if like you are not corresponding with a specific person, like you, you kind of like take a note from. Gina or Jess, and you're like corresponding with like speculation or like this kind of like imagined of her. I think also it helps bring a lesson to the like grief, loss, death writing, you know? Like, so much being a third of the vampire. Stella has asked, how do you learn to let go of any stress or needing to be perfect when you enter your writing space? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> this is something I mean, that, yeah, this is an active, like, grappling through the program. Um, I was really struggling with this in my first semester, and Allison quite literally said, maybe you should drop out if you're not, like, coming with, like, the intention of, like, if you're coming with, like, this negative intention in your writing, you're not being a, like, joyous creation. Um, so I kind of had, like, a moment where I had to, like, think, like, why, why in hell am I creating? Like, what am I going to get out of this program? How should I, like, approach this program? Um, and it's still, like, a very, like, daily thing where I have to, like, okay, I'm allowed to like write badly, or I'm allowed to create badly. Um, I'm allowed to like change what the meaning of bad or, or good means um, in a culture that like tries to voice like those two like categories on you, or even like in a lot of other programs where like your thesis has to be perfect, and we're now going to interrogate you. Um, it's it's still awkwardly being grappled with. I wish I had a great answer. <laughs> and he said, like, you just do this and everything will be fine. I always think about music. I'm also to, to the point of grief and, and uh, play, like all music, but particularly black music, I just think it's like grief and play, like to the extreme. Um, but also letting go of perfection, like, Music is just so, it just feels different. Um, it just feels different. Where, where it's expected because you can't, because it's gone. It's so ephemeral. You know, that's why music is so severe too. It's like, it's just people have to do it on the spot and they have to keep up with it. But I mean, getting to a, letting go of perfection can help. I, I was hearing, um, what's his name? Um, Brandon Shimoda was talking about drawing because he's bad at it or something like that. Like if you can go to a different art that you don't have pressure on yourself, like then you can allow yourself to be imperfect a lot, a lot more easily, I think. And then you maybe try to go back to writing with a similar yeah. mindset. He he read that during our course residency. It's called the process of a drawing being made. I think it's sort of like um, the Arizona University blog. He describes like at first I thought like the falling out was with writing or the falling out was with drawing, falling out was with this. No, the falling out is with myself. And like I had listened to that um, during my first residency, still trying to like grapple with my own like falling out with photography. And I was like, oh, I'm speaking directly to me. <laughs> I'm kind of going to internalize that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jess, our 
I'll say a large portion of it. I'm looking at. I love the idea of language as material and am interested in the many varied ways you each use language. I wonder if this is part of an effort to keep contact surface bodily with the material itself. Maybe you can each speak a little to the strategies you use, epistolary might be one, to keep language as a place of open engagement. Yeah. And then, oh, oh, hold on. Like, what happens when you get in the studio and you can't in that moment connect? So what do you do that? Looking for tips, asking for a bunch. <laughs> 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 When I like go to the studio with the intention to work, or I like sit down with the intention to write, and there's like a disconnect, then I do something completely different. Like you're saying, like between mediums, and like also bringing up music. Like I think my go-to is like, what is a somatic thing I can do? Like go on a walk, or like dance, or like move around. Something that I don't need to be anything. Like in terms of dancing around the house, it doesn't need to be anything. Or going on a walk is a walk. It doesn't need to be anything. Else, but like physically moving, I think helps my brain a lot, or like helps me get into uh, a place where I can maybe tap into feeling. And also, I think just giving yourself permission to like not be connecting in that moment. Like, I've gone to the studio before, like, okay, I'm gonna work, and then I like push myself to do half an hour, and then, like, yeah, I'm actually gonna be and I'm not gonna do any more of this today. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think letting yourself be is also. Just in our um, time together, um, describe kind of like delinquency, like being able to like turn away from something in order to like keep um, keep surviving, keep keep like having like a sustainable, I guess would be like the best word, like hard practice. Since like this process gets exhausting, like especially for people like if this is your first residency this is a long day and then the other days are going to be super long and then you have to go out and you're going to be with your mentor and it's going to be five very long packets and then you keep going and then you keep going but you also have like your life that you're juggling as well with residency and then it's going to be over and then you have to figure it out hopefully Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 For me, for the language and material part of the question, like I, it's always easier for me to think about the material materiality if it's the language is a little bit contextualized. So if it's something like. Um, the bibliomancy exercise that Roz gave us, or um, just returning to journals that are like really old, or just any way to get any way to have like a mini ego death, basically. Mm -hmm. how I think of it. Like, to where I'm not attached to the language, it doesn't mean something to me anymore as like an ego, it means something as a material. I feel like that was your exercise. Materials, but then I feel like that's how you make your way back to yourself without you just like set out for that. Like you can be contextualized and you just want to attain a self and butterfly and you end up like writing back to yourself. Yeah. Anything else from Zoom, from the room? We have possibly one minute left. <laughs> If not, we can exit with one of the last emails that you had sent in the chain laws. Thank you so much, friends. Thank you for writing. Thank you for reading. Thank you for thinking. Thank you for feeling. Thank you for grieving. Thank you for living. Thank you for human being. Thank you for seeing. Thank you for listening. Thank you for breathing and dancing and playing. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh,